How you doing folks? Scott coming back with you with some helpful hints uh, with uh, Van Dorsten Custom Firearms. We have one here and this is a custom build gone wrong. Um, what we've got here is a Winchester Model 70. It's a post 64 no clock extractor and in fact if it was a clock extractor it probably wouldn't be having the problem that it's having. What we have here is our customer that brought this in. One, he had a live round stuck in it, and I got that out. It was, uh, I believe this is due to him being a reloader, and he didn't size this properly. Uh, but that's not the core of his issues right now, because the customer complained that the gun, ever since he had it built, and this is a custom build, the gun hasn't functioned properly. So, what I've got here is a Winchester Model 70 long action, chambered in 22250. The problem that we're having is that that is a short action round in a long action gun. Okay? I'll show you what I mean here. So look at how much space there is between the the front of the bullet and the the chamber area. So we can put that in and what's happening is it does load, which is a little surprising, but it does load properly and but when you go to eject it it pulls it out of the chamber and it just kind of lies right there it does not um, eject properly there's a lot of different things that can cause this normally on a regular gun but what the problem is here is that there's just too much room in the action for this little round so when it pulls it out it's got too much room to move around and it's just dropping it right there in the action um, I could probably tinker around with things on this and get it to function properly. Um, it is going to be expensive because you're just going to play, uh, charge an hourly rate. And it's probably still never going to function 100%. Um, well, the story behind this one is, is the customer bought this off of somebody at somebody else's project. And then he took it to one of the local schools and he had the gun threaded and chambered at the school. The school did not really follow through well on the function checks because it obviously doesn't function properly. And uh, the customer then got the live round stuck in it and he brings it to me and then wants it all checked out. So it's kind of a sad story that one, he didn't do enough research on what he was buying. Two, the school didn't catch the issue properly. Um, they should have. I mean, it's a, obviously a long action gun and it's a short action round and you just don't want to do that. It, it it really doesn't function that well. Now you can get away with it in some areas. You can get away with it with a 308 a lot, but with a 22 250, it's it's just not going to work properly. Um, the round is just too small, and there's too much room for it to move around in the action. Um, at this point, the customer has decided not to do anything with the gun. I got the live round out. He said he was just going to take it apart and sell his parts. So. You know, let this be a lesson to you. If you're going to do a custom build, make sure you're researching every component and what the best rounds for the component is. Um, I did tell the customer that, you know, if you wanted to use this action for like a varmint type uh, gun, that 25-06 would be an excellent choice. It would, it would function perfectly as a 25-06. It's just not going to do well as a 22-250. So uh, let that be a lesson to all of you out there. Do your research. If you're going to do a custom build, if somebody's selling a bunch of components before you have it put together, make sure that they're going to work together and take it to a competent gunsmith that uh, will look at these things and help keep you out of trouble. Uh, so that's the tip for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. And uh, tune in next week for uh, VDC Firearms. We're going to be starting on some custom Smith & Wesson uh, revolver work. So that's going to be interesting. I'm going to show you some of the uh, more detailed things that uh, uh, we do to custom revolvers. Um, not going to give you all of my little tricks, but uh, I am going to help keep you out of trouble if you try to do things yourself. I've seen a lot of this stuff on YouTube, and there's a lot of stuff that they're just doing that is going to damage the gun and not do things properly. So uh, make sure you tune back in to check that out. Uh, this is Scott with VDC Firearms, your friendly neighborhood gunsmith, and I'll see you next time.